This day, a day we never seen before, and a, ne a day we would never see again. So we thank God for God's blessing upon us. We thank you uh, for joining us this morning here at Host of Temple, seeing the church located in Macon, Georgia. We welcome you, those who have joined us in person, but also those who joined us on Zoom and who are maybe watching us on our Facebook live stream and in the future. And I'm just announcing it because we prophesying the YouTube uh, TV channel we currently do have. So we got to get it operating properly. But we just welcome you here because you could be anywhere else, but you chose to be with us and you chose to worship with us this morning. We'll begin uh, just briefly with our announcements today. And that is simply we are invited, you are invited to join us tomorrow as church school is Tomorrow at 7 p.m., you have the same uh, ID number and the passcode numbers that you are currently for our worship services. So if you had that information, you use that to join us. We are, uh, uh, so we, we, we pray that you would do that. Now, our Bible study this week has been canceled um, and next week as well because it's the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. So, but we will join us. The following week, I believe it's maybe the 28th of November, to join us again with our Bible study. We are studying in the book, currently the book of the Hebrews. Hebrews. And then I want to remind you um, that on Saturday at 11 a.m., I'm asking the members, officers, to join us for our quarterly conference. It is at 11 a.m. The information the passcode and id number will be has already been distributed but i would make sure we distribute it again we were asking all our reporters the presidents and and the officers to submit their reports by wednesday to reverend Emily hopkins so we will have everything collected and submitted to our elder prior to also prior to our quarterly conference and so if you're a president or if you have any activities in the church, you should write a, a report, a quarterly report, and have that submitted to Reverend Emily Hopkins by Wednesday. And I'm going to put a time on it, Wednesday, 2 p.m. Wednesday, 2 p.m. Okay, I want to also remind us that we are still in our harvest uh Festival campaign. Uh, we ask that you continue to, uh, um, if you have made a pledge, to honor your pledge. Continue to be aware that we are uh, we in our fundraising season. Two reasons: just to to 
to be able to honor our commitment to the uh, connection of church, our apportionment, and also we have some ministries, but facilities, uh, renovation and repairs that we need to make this year, this, this conference year. And so I've asked the members, those who would join us in our campaign to give whatever you can over your tithes and offerings. And I'm going to ask a specific amount for those because sometimes I've heard that because we are fearful of asking for specific amounts, we don't receive it from some folks. So the specific amount could be $500, $1,000 over your tithe and your offering. We thank you in advance. We thank you for all that you have done thus far. We thank you for what you're doing and what you will do. We thank you. We pray that God will bless you richly in your giving. Okay. So now I want to ask that you will uh, center yourselves to uh, worship. Why are we here to worship? God. We worship God and give thanks to God for all that God has done for the last week and times past. If you look back in the rear view mirror, you'll, you'll see that how, how have you made it over? How we made it over? It was only through God. So God, center yourself as we prepare our hearts and worship. So we ask Reverend Hopkins you will come and call us to worship and open us with an opening hymn and prayer. Amen. We are happy to be here this morning. And the scripture reminds me that the Lord did not give us a spirit of fear, but of a sound mind. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Our opening hymn this morning, if you are able to stand, is number 223 in our hymn, The Solid Rock. We know my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. With no further line, let us sing this hymn. My hope is Built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all of the ground is sinking sand, all of the ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils, his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Verse 4. When he shall come with trumpet sound, oh, may I then in him be found, dressed in his righteousness. 
darkness alone faultless to stand before the throne on christ the solid rock i stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand amen amen our affirmation of faith what is it that we believe i believe in god the father almighty the maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. Let us pray. Oh, gracious God, we come to you once again, thanking you for another opportunity to worship in your house. We know, Lord, that it is not just to come here, just to worship here. We have to go out and spread the love and the knowledge of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Come and bring us a fresh anointing this morning. You are welcome in this worship service. We love you. We glorify you. We magnify you. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Our scripture reading will be given by Sister Zena Jenkins. Minister Sister Gina Jenkins. I get it right in a minute. Bless the Lord, everybody. Bless the Lord. We come to the church to worship God, to worship him in spirit and in truth. Our scripture for today is Matthew 25, verses 1 through 13, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like ten brides, bridesmaids who took their lamps and went to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish and five were wise. The five who were foolish didn't take enough oil for their lamps, but the other five were wise enough to take a long extra oil. When the bridegroom was delayed, they all became, became drowsy and fell asleep. At midnight, they were roused by the shout, Look, the bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the, bridegroom, all the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, Please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourself. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. 
Then those who were ready, who were ready, went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was locked. Later, when the other five bride, bridesmaids returned, they stood outside calling, Lord, Lord, open the door for us. But he called back, believe, believe me, I don't know you. So you too, you too, me, you, you too, must keep watch, for you do not know the day or the hour of my return. May the Lord bless the heroes and doers of his holy word, the glory of Patra. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen and amen. In the Bible, it says that his house, his house, shall be a house of prayer. It's prayer time, church. It's prayer time, church. If there's anything on your mind, on your heart, this is the time that we prepare, that's prepared in our worship service for you to, to talk to the Lord, to commune with him, which is a joyous time. His house. He didn't say it was going to be a house of preaching. He didn't say it was going to be a house of teaching. He said it would be a house of prayer. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on this earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us of our sins as we have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory. And now unto him that is able to do exceedingly abundantly, exceedingly abundantly, who's able to heal, who's able to deliver, who's able to set the captives free according to the power that works in us, that works in you, that works in you, the power, the power of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost. To him be glory in the church and in Christ throughout all generations, forever, forever, forever. 20, 23, 20, 24, 20, 25, forever and ever and ever and ever, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, forever and ever, January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, and December, forever and ever, amen and amen. Let the church say amen. Hallelujah and amen. So be it. At this time, I want to just offer you again an opportunity. Uh, this is our moment of, of to ask of you to give of your tithes and your offering. Again, we are in our harvest campaign, and you've heard me um, earlier make that plea um, that we are in our campaign to raise our funds, not only for our apportionment's responsibility to our 
missionary church, the connection of church, but also with our own ministries here at Hosey in Macon. And it includes some facilities, um, repair and renovations and just, and so we ask that you give uh, out of your heart, give above your tithes and your offering. I'm gonna give a specific amount of, I ask my members to do it for 500 to $1,000 or more, but if you give less, we, we do uh, ask that you be obedient to God because it is between you and God and your giving. And we ask you to be a cheerful giver because a cheerful giver is a generous giver and a more blessed giver. You can do that by giving it to or dropping it by the church or mailing it at uh, Hosey Temple, CME Church, 1011 Washington Avenue, zip code 31201. Or you can do it through our Giblify app, lit search for Host of Temple in Macon, and you can give that way. We have envelopes set up, the different campaigns or the different uh, envelopes you would like to put it in as far as the, in the giving. And so we thank you. We thank God for you. We thank God for all that you have done. We thank God for God, for being God. And because uh, it, it, we're giving back to God where God, all of it belongs to God, including our lives, because I heard it in the prayer, it's forever and forever and forever. Amen. And so uh, what was the song we used to sing as my closing remarks on this is that um, you can't be God-given no matter how you try. The more you give, the more he gives back to you. So just keep giving. Uh, keep on giving. Because it's true. You cannot be God. May God bless you and may God keep you. At this time, let us prepare our hearts for our song of preparation for the sermon. Yeah. 
So our text is 1 Thessalonians, 4th chapter, verse 13 through 18. But it's 1 Thessalonians, 4th chapter, verses 13 through 18. I'm going to read the text in which that song was pretty much based on, because I could probably go straight to the sermon based on what she just sung. But it reads... But we do not want you to be uninformed. Another uh, translation says being ignorant, brothers and sisters, about those who have died and so that you may not grieve as others do who, get, who have no hope. But since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. For this we declare to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, will by no means perceive those who have died. For the Lord himself, with a great cry of command, with the archangel's call, with the sound of God's trumpet, with a sin from heaven, and the dead in Christ will rise 
Then we who are alive, who are left, will be caught up in the clouds together with them to meet the Lord in the air. And so, we will be with the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. So the title will be simply The Coming of the Lord. The Coming of the Lord. Let us pray. Lord God, we do thank you for so much that our 10,000 tongues will be not enough for our gratitude and appreciation. But I personally ask now, Lord, that you would be with us, be with me, that your Holy Spirit will take over my spirit and use me as your instrument to proclaim your word to your people. I pray that your word would not return to you void, that it have its full effect. Open our eyes so we can see. Open our ears so we can hear, not hear, but listen. And, Lord, touch our hearts so we can have compassion, your compassion for each other. That is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. We're still in the season of kingdom time. Notice, you know, the kingdom time is where we celebrate God, great, God, God, great saving acts from creation until now. But we're especially thankful to God for giving his son, Jesus Christ. The color is green, and green represents growth. We need to grow. Not so much physically, but spiritually. We need to get closer to God. We we should not only just celebrate, and we should celebrate, we don't take that lightly, what God has done for us, but we need to be growing in our love for and our knowledge of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One of the first steps in, in our growth is to acknowledge and believe that God exists. In Hebrews 11 and 6 says, that God rewards those who, go, who seek God because without faith, it is impossible to please God. And so one of the things we can recognize about God, we should recognize about God, and I'm hoping, I pray that God helps you in the recognition of God's character of love, that God is love. And when you imitate God, we become children of God, not run through that because I heard Joyce Ma say something about that issue about love because she was battling with the love issue about God even loving because of her experience of life. With him. But it took a little while by her continuing to seek and it finally dawned on God love, not more, not less, but even just even right now, God is love. One of the suggested texts uh, today is the text I read, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13, and 18, and the scripture reading you heard in Matthew 25, 1, 13, and with the two more other scriptures, one was Joshua, about who you're going to serve this day. And so in this text, the letter, it's a letter to Thessalonians, the church in Thessalonia, and Paul writes, a, reflects on a warm and affectionate relationship that he has developed with them. There's something about fellowship. I mean, even those one, two, three, four, five of us in here today, it's something about fellowship. And so he reflects and he just comments because we need to be, I'm glad to see you. I'm happy to see you. It makes me feel good to see you. I hope it makes me, you feel good. To see me. It's a fellowship. And we we reflect, he reflects on this warm and affectionate relationship he has with him. The text is a pastoral letter. The whole chapter is a pastoral letter uh, to encourage and to exhort. Because the Thessalonians, like many of us today, are facing hardships. And, and, and but through their hardship, they remain faithful and their good report spread it all over the country, Macedonia and Archaea. <laughs> all over the country. I mean, people are going to hear about you. 
And it, the good news, I pray, will spread about your faithfulness. Because God, God was active there. God is active here. God is empowering here. God is encouraging here. And God is persistent in the lives of those who turn to God. The main issue addressed in Thessalonians, though, was the worries about loved ones who had died before Christ returned. The text, toward the end of our church year, of the I'm talking about, we're at the end of our church year, okay, which expresses at the end of the church year's kingdom time. Because in two or three weeks, we're going to be in Advent season. That is the beginning of our church year. So we're at the end of our church year, and it expresses this, 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 this apocalyptic view of history. Many modern Christians do not share. The text speaks of uh, parousia. That's a Greek word. Greek word meaning coming. Or the advent. The real meaning of the picture of that word parousia, parousia is that it's a cer ceremonial entry ritual entry of a king. That's what express this is this is the parasua season is the coming and advent of Christ. It refers to the second coming and the return of Christ which Christians throughout the centuries have proclaimed. We proclaimed it earlier this morning. We proclaim in the Nicene Creed. It says he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. Paul, he proclaims that the second coming with a vivid imagery. He says, the Lord himself <laughs> will ascend from heaven with a cry and a command, with the archangels calling, with the sound of God's trumpet, and all the Christians, dead and still living, are caught up in the cloud. What a vivid imagery where they will meet the Lord in the air. This dramatic text thus falls within the broader theological category of eschatological, es es eschatological, the doctrine, this is what that is, the doctrine of the end of the world, of the last days. What do you believe, that's what the doctrine, about the last days? Mark Lee of the homiletic perspective in the season of the word preaching revised common legendary, he writes, why this vivid imagery may provoke curiosity and entice uh, spectacular uh, claims, spe speculative claims about what exactly will happen at the world's end. Paul Intent in this letter is not to offer a general description of the end times. The Christians in Thessalonica, Thessalonica were confident that Christ coming again would happen immediately in their lifetime. This was complicated by the fact that some of the faithful had already died. And thus questions arose concerning whether these, those Christians who died, listen to this, unexpectedly would sh also share in the glory of the resurrection, Jesus, at his coming. That was their question. We don't raise that question like that. They asked the question, will they experience the same glory we will experience when Jesus comes? <laughs> Paul, in his interpretation, he does it in a pastoral care. He does it in a pastoral care because he, he understands their concern. Not only he attends to the fate of those who have died, but also he envisions the encounter between the coming Lord and those who are still alive. The challenge of this text is amplified by the fact that there are significant apocalypse. Ap 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 apocalyptic, get it right, 
voices. Ap apocalyptic is dealing with the future judgment. And there's different voices in which the contemporary church and the world are still hearing. And, and that's the popularity of books such as, you know, the Left Behind series shows. These ideas are widely accepted even in mainline congregations. Most of us have wondered about such depictions <laughs> of fickle pr providence that produces car wrecks and airplane crashes and, and side shows during this second coming experience. I remember Sam and I had a conversation we was talking about this before, it was just the beginning of the pandemic. And I said, what are we going to do? Wear masks at restaurants? And we laughed, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> and we were wearing masks at restaurants. <laughs> this, this image we're talking about, plane crashes and car crashes and, and uh, you know, one plane in the field and one left, you know, left, uh, it, you know. <laughs> Would that actually happen? I don't know. This week's epistle is one of the key proof texts for the idea of rapture. Because I don't know where else is, is in the Bible dealing with this. It's, this is an imagery, this picture of the rapture that will be caught up. This particular eschatological perspective finds its most uh, uh, ambiguous descriptions. I mean, question. I mean, it, it's ambiguous the meaning of the descriptions. Like, what's the God's trumpet? What would that sound like? What would that look like? Lord descending from heaven. What would that? So it's ambiguous descriptions. Question. How do we avoid <laughs> raining on the parade of those who find hope in this rapture myth without giving encouragement to the uh, sectarian speculation or denomination belief? I mean, how do you, I mean, because, you know, whether this happened or not, I don't I just want to be there when God called me to, you know, at judgment. You're going to be called. You're going to be sent. You're going to talk to God. You're going to experience all that you need to experience. But we don't know how that looks like. It helps us to remember that there are often powerful, and, and let me just pause right now because this text is used a lot during funerals. But this, this opportunity, the moment that is presented today, gives us the opportunity to wrestle with this because we can actually listen to the details of it because instead of being in grief, doing a funeral. <laughs> it helps to remember that there are often powerful emotional reasons for apocalyptic uh, 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 ideas. And I hope I pronounced it. The word, the world can seem to many a dangerous place at war with God and God's people. Well, only the most dramatic actions by God can say. Because we're doing some ridiculous stuff in this world. People feel oppressed from every side by the focus opposed to God. Their loyalty is undermined by this endless compromise, compromising of earning money and, and consuming material things and, and things that we have to rec try to recreate or something. We imagine that our lives as believers should move from glory to glory. Instead, we find ourselves going from crisis to crisis. The war in Ukraine. Now we got a war in Israel. We got war in the streets. We got homicides everywhere. We got divided country in our politics. I thought we were Americans, all of us. <laughs> from crisis to crisis. We are kept going by faith that God will vindicate God's people in the end and remedy this losses of our lives. We have experienced, we have experienced whether adversities or hunger or death of our loved ones, that God going to pay back the big payback. Lee, Mark Lee goes on and said, the question Paul addresses grows out of the concrete uh, experience of the Thessalonians, foundational to their faith with the expectation that Jesus' return was imminent and so imminent, it was so imminent that Paul had to remind them, y'all need to keep y'all jobs. Y'all need to not stop working. Keep your employment <laughs> in the meantime till Christ comes. 
They were a part of community that could see beyond their present persecutions and troubles for the light of the new dawn was just uh, below the horizon. So when some of their members died, the question arose, will they miss out on this blessing of Jesus coming? So through this witnesses, Paul addresses one of the deepest human fears that had been abandoned by loved ones. That's one of our most deepest human fears, to be abandoned by loved ones because death separates relationships come to an end hopes are dashed I mean when I talk about death separates I, I just I mean my mom came straight to my mind my dad had been gone now almost 17 years and, and so I mean it separates I, my, I remember grandmama I remember great-grandmama, great-grandpa, and these relationships has severed. They has come to an end. The stories people tell about the, their futures have to be, we have to rewrite our lives. How, I mean, my, my, my cousin who lost her husband not long ago, now have to, you know, you know how that goes when you have to take care of the business. This, that, I mean, you have to rewrite your life. And that is the context Paul is addressing. He proclaims that Christians have a future narrative that includes reunion with those who are loved but are now gone. The unbroken family circle, the heavenly banquet, the wedding feast all speak to our longing for reestablishing relationships with those we love. However, that reunion is imagined. And it's truly a matter of imagination. The Christian can face both life and death reinforced by that hope that we will be reunioned. We don't know how, we don't know when, but we can believe through our hope is faith, faith is faith is the evidence of something that is seen. It's our hope, whether it's imagined. Thank God for our imagination. We may be quick to presume that the scripture has little, little theological or reference for us since Paul and the early Christians were mistaken that Christ's second coming was imminent. <laughs> and so most Christians, 20 centuries later, don't even, don't even consider this understanding of the et et eternal destinies of Christ immediate return most of us nevertheless here at the advent of advent in these last times see it's interesting that this text is used right here almost at advent because we get ready to celebrate his first coming but this text is making us reminding us about jesus second coming the text invites us to live within an eschatological question that Paul anticipated and he answered for the church in Thessal Thessalonica. Here's the question. This is the question for the whole sermon right here. What does the coming of the Lord mean for us who are alive today? What does the coming of the Lord mean for us who are alive today? Jennifer McBride, in her theological perspective in the season of the word preaching of the revised common legendary, she writes, she says, in the coming of God, Christian eschatology, Surgeon Moltman, theologian, he argues that eschatology is first and foremost not about ends, but about beginnings about the new creation of all things. You know, it's the second Corinthians, or first Corinthians, somewhere it's talking about it. when you have Christ, you have a new creation. You are a new creature. This new creation is grounded and participating in the rising of the crucified Christ. We believe that Jesus died and rose again. And so Christians, we are fundamentally people of hope. People who eagerly await the new thing, the resurrected Christ brings. The advent of Christ occurs, according to classical Christianity's 
uh, doctrine of the threefold, listen to this, parousia, threefold coming, second coming. Not only in the birth of Christ, that's the firstborn, that we celebrate in weeks to come, and not only the second coming, that's the second fold, when Christ returns in glory, but that's also in the spirit, this is what I want you to get, who brings the new, it's the threefold, it's the spirit, Holy Spirit, who brings the new into our this worldly life. Did you get that? In Christ's coming, what it means for us today is the Holy Spirit brings this new into our life right now. The coming of Christ is for us today, affecting particularly personally, affecting us socially, and affecting us politically, consequences right here and now. For Maltman, the concrete present new thing manifest the historical event of Christ's coming and the arriving in our contemporary moment. As Moltman argues, history itself cannot produce anything astonishingly new. It can only proceed from the past and bring about what is possible. In contrast, though, this new thing, the coming of Christ, brings is not based on what has come before or on what is possible. Rather, it is the Lord. Yes, it is. Descending from heaven. You can't see it. You know, when Jesus was baptized, he, came and he said the, look, the, it was a dove or something like that came sending. You, you know, it's the Lord descending from heaven. The resurrection from the dead in your heart. The creation of nothing. Out of nothing. The genuinely new, the unexpected surprise, more than we can say or imagine, because eyes have not seen and ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man or woman, what God has for you. That's the God descending from heaven. That's the coming of the Lord. The coming of Christ produces uh, uh, to do, for purposes to do a new thing. The advent of Christ brings the impossible turns a rock into a pool of water, makes a way where there is no way. This is what the coming of the Lord Christ means for us who are alive. Finally, what does Christ's coming say about God's own identity? Whether well, God ascends from heaven, meets Christians in the air, arising in the Christ child or continually breaks into this world and living through the power of the Holy Spirit. This passage witnesses to the fact that God is a God on the move. God is dynamic. God is never static. He's never stayed, but always stirring. Always open up reality up to God's eschatological uh, promises and possibilities. We always open to God's end time promises and possibilities. More and fundamentally, God is a God who comes. When when the, 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 the when you heard when Vicky she said when He shall no this was in the hymn when He shall come with trumpet sound. Oh may I then in him be found, dressed in God's righteousness alone, faultless to stand before his throne. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. And if you haven't given your life to Christ, this is the day. This is the moment. This is the opportunity that God has given you. And don't take it for granted. He gives you opportunity to say, hey, I was off pace. I was wrong. I repent. I want to get right with you. And now I get right with my neighbor. And I like what Z, uh, uh, Minister Zena said, and just intend, I intend, I intend, I intend to live a new life in honor 
and glory in your name. If you want to become a part of that here at Hosty, it's here. And we welcome you to join us. All you got to do is look it up on the screen. We got our email address. We got a phone number. You may call. And, and, and it's my cell phone number. You are, you'll reach me. If you, you don't get me into the call, I promise to call you back. We can have a discussion. We can have a talk. We can have a walk. Just because it's a glorious time to be able to talk about the Lord to each other. It strengthens us and encourages us. He ends the text saying, encourage each other. We all need courage. God bless you and may God keep you is my prayer. Our doc silence. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above ye heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. And now, uh, benediction, now may gr the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, who we call Father and Abba, our Father, and the sweet, sweet, I mean sweet Holy Spirit, communion with us henceforth, now and forever. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen. God bless you and may God keep you. We thank you for joining us this morning. We hope to see you next Sunday one more time in this place. God bless you and may God keep you. We got a song, John. We got a song. No, it's okay. <laughs>